Hey YouTube, time for another review video. Quick update before we get started. I'm using a different audio setup so my voice should sound clear and I've got a new camera to replace my old one. Won't focus as well on the workbench, however in theory it lets me zoom in quite nicely and actually pan around without introducing additional camera shake which you might be familiar with from these videos because I've got this mounted on an arm mounted to the workbench. But without further ado, let's get into this. It's a unboxing or quasi-unboxing, because I've already been using it, uh, and kind of feature overview slash review of the Hick Micro B1L thermal camera. There are other models in the B series. However, all you really need to know is you get a bigger screen and you get uh, hybrid thermal and optical images that you can configure and choose to fuse a visible wavelength picture together with the thermal to highlight to a customer if you're a contractor where something needs to be fixed. Um, but for the home gamer who's doing electronics or wants to be able to see if something's overheating or find bad insulation in the home, this is probably more than enough. Um, so disclaimer, I have been using it. I have gone into the box. So if it's, you know, a little bit messy on the inside, that's not to do with uh, these guys. That's just to do with yours truly. But uh, yeah, let's get this uh, show on the road. Um, pretty nonchalant box. Uh, actually comes with a UL and Canadian UL listing on it, which is nice to see. Um, otherwise, it's it's a box with no fanfare. It just has their uh, information on it. Some uh, generic basic information on the inside. Foam some information and warranty cards but really realistically if you're watching this video you're not here to care about this you want to see what this camera is all about so uh let me just get those out of the way this unit comes with a power supply i believe if i can just get this open ironically enough i haven't been using this because guess what usb-c means I don't really need to care about their uh, built-in power supply, or not built-in, but included power supply. Looks like we have a USB... Actually, it looks like it's a USB-C um, data cable. It actually has the data pins populated, and it's pretty hard to see. And we will test this. Will it actually pick it up? No, no, it won't. You'll have to take my word for it. But um, yeah, this looks like it's a data cable and I'll test it. If this is not a data cable, I'll put it in the uh, overlay when I edit this video together. Little power supply. Looks like it's OEM through some Chinese company, uh, but it comes with the uh, various world travel adapter blades so you can swap it out to whatever country you're in. It's not bad, means they only have to uh, maintain one product. Honestly, this entire assembly looks like it's white boxed, which means they just had someone else do it. Who knows what they're doing? I can respect that because as a company, if you're focusing on your uh, primary core competency, which is making thermal cameras in this case, why would you want to try and fuss around with trying to get approval ratings in all the different countries over a power supply, which increase the costs here? Um, I got this $100 off uh, during... Black Friday on Amazon. Admittedly, it is the uh, Rube Goldberg machine of human suffering, but it was cheap. So there's that. Uh, this is the B1L. All that's really different, again, is you get a slightly larger screen on the other versions, and you get a... Uh, oops, I left the lens cover open uh, when I put this away. You get another camera here that's the optical uh, sensor, so you can do the kind of hybrid imaging. Otherwise, it's just foam in this box, so I'm going to get this off the table. And let's talk about the camera. Um, I don't actually know what's in behind here. Oh, it looks like just like screw covers. So that's not an SD card slot. I don't think this version actually allows you to take an SD card out of the camera. It's built-in limited memory, so there is that downside. Uh, you get a standard quarter 20 threaded uh, screw hole for tripod mount. It is a heat set insert, which is nice. Um, not as nice as just a metal chassis with this built in. Um, wow, for the first video with this camera, I'm really not liking the inability to focus tight on things, but oh well. Um, so 
it's not integrated with the frame. It looks like it's just a heat set insert. However, the plastic uh, does feel pretty sturdy. There's no creaking. There's no um, wobble or anything. And there is a nice grippy rubber texture all on the surface. Obviously, you can't feel it through the YouTube video, but uh, you'll have to take my word for it. Um, gadget freaks and nerds alike rejoice. USB-C. No more of that USB micro nonsense. However, no removal of a battery. So if this thing, oops, if this thing uh, runs out of power, you're gonna have to charge it. Uh, seems to charge pretty quickly, and I've only topped it off once. But uh, without further ado, let's just turn this on. Hold it, turns it on. Um, there is a sliding protective lens. This again does not have a variable focus, so you get the focal length that's baked into the lens. That does reduce the cost, but it does save you uh, a lot of hassle when you're just trying to use it. It's not as nice as a FLIR, but again, cost. This is like a third of the cost almost. Um, this is the 25 hertz model because it's uh, not rated for uh, US export or whatever, I think is the rule that they have it locked to 9 hertz. Um, so you can see it's fairly real time other than a slight lag behind it I'm trying to get this without reflection um, the user interface you have a uh, let me just try and put something here that's got some warmth behind it like a cell phone all right so the user interface has three little crosshairs and three values in the top left corner min max and center uh, all thermal cameras need to do that internal black body calibration check. Basically, the red crosshair is the maximum value measured, the blue crosshair is the minimum, and the green is the center. Um, you do have to set the emissivity from the menu, and that's reflected in the bottom right corner. Um, your effective focal distance is configured in software uh, through the menu, but it really doesn't do anything. <clears throat> Otherwise, it's a fairly responsive user interface. Um, it's a little bit time delayed, you can see on the video, but it's fast enough for anyone's purposes doing stuff around the home, workshop, uh, machinery, etc. A um, couple other icons, you've got a Wi-Fi icon. Yes, this thing is Wi-Fi enabled. Uh, more on that later. Units of measurement, degree C, it can do Fahrenheit if you live in that country, or it can do Kelvin if you are a SI unit freak and don't want to use Celsius like all normal people around the world. Battery indicator in the top right, temperature gauge, and you can change the uh, color scheme uh, from this main window without problem. Um, other than that, it's a thermal camera, there's not much more to say. Um, User interface, straightforward enough. Pull trigger to receive photo, but you also have to hit confirm, otherwise it won't save it. Which is very annoying, because sometimes you just want to take photos quickly. That I don't like. But, again, it does almost everything you need, and it's only minor user interface gripes, which can always be patched out in firmware uh, if they take feedback. From a um, user interface standpoint, you get plenty of options. Um... All the way through this list picture settings or no sorry this is just your picture gallery um, you have the ability to configure rules like having different uh, spots measurement you can go in and define where you want the spot so if you've got to measure say like three different points that are equally spaced you can configure it so it's uh, flexible enough how do I escape this menu Nope, that's... Well, we're doing this live. Thank you, camera, for having a bit of a cumbersome user interface. I'm sure if you actually read those instruction cards, it'll tell you what to do, but, you know, who does that, really? Um, you have the ability to set an alarm, so if it crosses a temperature threshold, um, it'll give you that warning to say, hey, you're pointed this, you've pointed this at something that's very hot. Best not to touch it. Emissivity is an important setting. Um, depending on the type of material, you'll want to reduce the emissivity. 
Um, basically, if you set the emissivity too high and the object very smooth or reflective, you're going to get a reading that's offset. So it never hurts to also measure it manually with a contact thermometer and then just sanity check against your emissivity. But that goes for any thermal camera. It's not unique to this one. Um, measurement range. You can set it to two different ranges. Um, one that's higher temperature, one that's lower temperature, and one that's auto. You can change your color palettes, which uh, you saw earlier. You can change your effective focal distance. I don't think that actually changes anything um, for the infrared camera optics, but I think it affects something like the, the temperature averaging because it probably compensates in software for the inverse square law. That is that rays of infrared light are being emitted from a surface, and the further away you are from that surface, you're going to get the inverse square of the distance as the coefficient in front of the amount of infrared energy you're observing at the sensor. So if you are one unit away, you're going to get a certain amount, and then if you move two units away, you're going to get the square root of that, and so on and so forth. Um, it's probably what that distance setting is for. There's a flashlight. It's just an LED. Never hurts to have it. Um, you can change your units. Settings about uh, your level and span, which I think is just your upper and lower bounds that you can change. Um, but why don't we just leave that on auto, because why fight the machine? Uh, you can set the time and date. You can set your auto off, and I'm just going to pull this off screen for a second. Um, you can enable uh, wireless LAN, so this actually joins the device to your network. Hotspot allows you to connect it from your phone, so if your phone's on the network already, then you can communicate with this device from your phone. If you put it in hotspot mode, you don't need a local wireless network, you can just go straight to your phone. Um, cast screen, I think it's actually um, dependent on the USB output that lets you effectively plug this into a computer and turn it into a USB webcam, uh, for lack of a better word. Um, there is something about a brand logo? I have no idea what that is. It's probably just the Hick Micro brand logo or watermark. Uh, macro mode, which I don't know what that actually does, um, but it's probably more to do with the... Um, more to do with the f assumptions on emissivity. What's really interesting is you can actually see the spot where the phone... Well, okay, you can't actually from this uh, viewpoint on the camera. But you know what? I think that means I just need to connect this to the Wi-Fi network and start recording the screen here. So why don't we just do that? So it's, I think, literally as simple as just connecting to the device. And you can set a password on it. There is a default. But uh, now at this point, you have a almost real-time image. You can kind of see the time delay here from left to right, where you can see my hand moving, and a couple milliseconds later, it shows up on the uh, actual cell phone. And just like that, I'm recording video. So in theory, this is all going to show up later, and I'll just keep this recording running for the rest of the video. Um, in terms of the image quality, it's hard to find examples. Um, I mean, turn on a power supply, it's going to take time to warm up. What else is going on around here? Uh, my, my confidence monitor that uh, is displaying my camera, you can definitely see that that's warm. Um, <clears throat> yeah, that power supply is going to take some time to warm up. Maybe there's residual heat inside this 3D printer. It looks like there is. You can see that there's some uh, warm bits in the back. You can see that there's a stepper motor back there, a uh, stepper motor back there, and another stepper motor back there. So, at least I'll put this video into the uh, video, <laughs> the recording into the video, so you can get a sense of 
how well it performs. That's near distance measurement, long distance measurement. Um, if I take it around the home a little bit and hey, it's thermal camera, so you can't actually see any personal information that's compromised. Uh, you can certainly see that there's some insulation difference. You can see that there's a warm light, but uh, yeah, you might probably want to change the, uh, I guess the speed at which the uh, auto ranging reacts because that can get a little annoying. But uh, you can definitely get a sense for where the uh, cold short is between the outer building envelope and the wall because you can see those cold studs and there's a giant clock on the wall. Um, but I mean, other than that, you can just hunt for things that are warm. What is that? Oh. VR headset? All right, so we're back at the bench. I think my only other gripe with this is the app on Android is very finicky to get um, media out of the app and over to email or something else. You have to like save it to your Google account and then move it over. It's just, it's a little bit cumbersome and it would be nicer if it just saved it to your phone's gallery or saved it to a default. Maybe there's a setting. At the end of the day, it's not a deal breaker because you're getting all this uh, functionality for a relatively low price. Um, it comes in cheaper than a FLIR camera of the same feature set. Um, <coughs> same feature set, uh, but it's also got the better refresh rate. Downside is not so nice optics on the lens. You can't focus it, so your mileage may vary. But otherwise, it is a solid and reliable uh, system. But otherwise, that's about it. I don't want to drag this video on. If you like this, please like, subscribe, comment. I don't uh, monetize this channel, so really any bit of exposure that you're willing to give it by subscribing does help. Um, I do this just for fun. Anyways, peace out.